Biotechnology capitalizes on the attributes of cells. In spite of the extraordinary diversity of cell types in living things, what is most striking is their remarkable similarity. This unity of life at the cellular level provides the foundation for biotechnology. All cells have the same basic design, are made of the same construction materials, and operate using essentially the same processes. DNA, the genetic material of almost all living things, directs cell construction and operation, while proteins do all the work. Now that we've familiarized ourselves with the structure of a cell, let's peek inside the nucleus and look at the structure of DNA. The chromosomes in the nucleus are highly coiled and condensed packages of DNA. When you zoom in on DNA, you can see that the DNA is arranged into functional units called genes. The Human Genome Project discovered that humans have approximately 20,000 genes on chromosomes. These genes are made up of individual DNA units called nucleotides arranged in a specific sequence unique to each gene. Chromosomes, genes, and nucleotides are all DNA. They are just different levels of organization for the DNA. Let me see if I can explain that better. To use an analogy, it's like a book. The book is divided into functional units called chapters, and the chapters are made up of individual words. Chromosomes are divided into functional units called genes, which are made up of individual nucleotides. It was not until the mid-1900s that DNA was elucidated as the inherited material described in Gregor Mendel's P-studies. Many scientists contributed to the current DNA knowledge, but most notably, Rosalind Franklin used X-ray crystallography to generate beautiful pictures of the DNA molecule. Watson and Crick studied these pictures, and along with all the data that had been collected from previous experiments, published a paper in 1953 describing the structure of the DNA molecule. Let's look at the structure that Watson and Crick described. Remember that a nucleotide is the smallest unit of a DNA molecule. There are three components to a nucleotide. The deoxyribose sugar, shown in blue, is a five carbon ring. Although only the fifth carbon is shown, you can see that a carbon is represented by the meeting of two lines on the pentose ring. The carbons are numbered clockwise, starting from the central oxygen. The phosphate group bonds to the fifth carbon. Also notice that on the third carbon, there is a hydroxyl, or OH, group. We'll discuss this in just a minute. The nitrogen base, shown in orange, is on carbon number one. There are four nitrogen bases in DNA. They are adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine. Those four nitrogen bases are actually divided into two different classes. The purines have double rings and are made up of adenine and guanine. The pyrimidines have a single ring and are made up of thymine and cytosine. DNA is a double-stranded molecule. Notice that adenine, A, forms bonds with thymine, T, and guanine, G, forms bonds with cytosine, C. The bonds that hold these two strands of DNA together are highlighted in light blue and are called hydrogen bonds. These hydrogen bonds give DNA its characteristic helical shape. Also, if you know the sequence of DNA on one strand of DNA, you can figure out the sequence of the other strand because A always pairs with T and G always pairs with C. Therefore, the two strands are called complementary. There is another kind of bond, the bond that holds the nucleotides together on the single strand of the DNA molecule. Remember when we looked at the phosphate on the fifth carbon and the OH on the third carbon of a nucleotide? Well, look closely and you'll see how the phosphate group on one nucleotide has formed a bond with the OH group on the nucleotide above it. This is called a phosphodiester bond, and these bonds are highlighted in yellow. The alternating string of sugar and phosphate bonds form the backbone of the DNA strand. One more thing. Notice that on one strand of the DNA molecule, the phosphate, or 5' prime end, is on top, and the OH, or 3' prime end, is on the bottom. What do you notice about the complementary strands of DNA? That's right, it's the mirror image. So on the complementary strand, the OH, or 3' prime end, is up, and the phosphate, or 5' prime end is down. Because of the opposite direction of the strands, they are called anti-parallel. This is going to become very important when we study how DNA replicates. Now that you understand the structure of DNA, we'll examine how the DNA information is made into proteins. 
Let's begin by examining the structure of RNA. RNA nucleotides are very similar to DNA nucleotides. However, there are some very important differences. First, the four bases in RNA are adenine, guanine, cytosine, and no, not thymine, but uracil. The second difference is found on the number two carbon. Do you see the purple highlighted hydroxyl group? This extra OH makes it difficult for RNA to form hydrogen bonds with adjacent nucleotides. That's why RNA is almost always single-stranded. And because it is single-stranded and represents only small sections of the DNA, RNA can leave the nucleus through small nuclear pores and travel into the cytoplasm where it is used as a template to make proteins. There are three types of RNA to be discussed. Let's define them. Messenger RNA, or mRNA, is shown in purple and is the copy of RNA that is made directly from the DNA sequence. The next two RNAs are necessary for making protein. Ribosomal RNA, or rRNA, is shown in brown and along with proteins is what makes up the ribosomes. Do you remember what happens at the ribosomes? That's right, ribosomes are where proteins are made. The last type of RNA, called transfer RNA, or tRNA, is shown in green, and it functions to bring amino acids to the ribosomes for protein assembly. The manipulation of genetic information, specifically DNA and RNA, is at the center of most biotechnology research and development. Modifications can be as simple as changing a single nitrogen base, G, A, T, or C, in a gene sequence, or as complicated as cutting out entire genes or gene sections and inserting new ones. Changing DNA sequences may affect the characteristics of cells or whole organisms.